Hello and welcome to Doing Business. My name is David Kezium Soke and I will be your host. In Rwanda, Radco reforms are making it easy for businesses to get credit, to pay taxes and to obtain construction permits. The same reforms have actually boosted the country's rankings in the 2014 World Bank Doing Business Report. In this episode, we examine what this means for Rwanda, whether small businesses are taking advantage of this and whether entrepreneurs are benefiting from it. In the 2014 World Bank Doing Business Index, Rwanda was named the second most improved country in the world after Ukraine. It was also listed the second easiest place to do business in Africa, bumping South Africa from the spot. Rwanda has been on a steady reform path over the past five years. According to World Bank, the country was a top global reformer back in 2010, 2011 and has now clinched this title again for 2014. This report, titled Understanding Regulations for Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, highlights Rwanda's improvement in eight reforms which have helped the country maintain its position above all its East African community partner states. I've done quite a lot in the, uh, uh, in the last uh, five years uh, with the implementation of the, the economic development and poverty reduction strategy. And this one has really significant results had maintained the GDP growth of 8.2%. But also it has reduced poverty significantly, and actually uh, more than one million people being uplifted uh, from, from poverty levels. We are still putting programs in place to make sure that we also deal uh, with the people at the bottom of the line to make sure that they are also, their lives can also improve. The RDB has been restructured to make sure that it can really implement the uh, private sector investment properly. We have had the central bank and the Minister of Finance together managing the economy. That's why the economic stability has been uh, quite stable for some time now and very resilient. We've had the Revenue Authority, which has really reformed significantly, now going very uh, uh, electronic. Everything else is in place, and this is an area of concentration to make sure that we can create the proper environment for the private sector this time to invest and invest heavily. Well, the purpose of doing business reform uh, report is to compare 189 countries using standard methodology. So we have, um, and these only measure small and medium enterprises, so the benchmark is SMEs. What an SME would undergo if they wanted to start a business from the life cycle of starting a business and what they go through in applying for land, in getting credit from a bank, when they get a dispute, what they expect when they go to court, when they have issues with shareholders or directors of their company, what they expect in terms of uh, their rights being protected, up to the time uh, a business becomes uh, insolvent and they can no longer pay their debts, what is the process of getting out of business formally without creditors who work with you uh, having no recourse? So it actually measures on a standard methodology SMEs experience from the time they're born up to the time they, 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 they die if they have to become insolvent. The good thing with the, the Doing Business Report is that the comparison is on a standard methodology. So you're actually comparing countries using the, the methodology that is comparable. And uh, it also you know, enables countries that are doing very well to actually show and to compete. So if a country, for example, what we do in Rwanda, we look at what countries are doing uh, that are doing very well, that are doing better than us, and we see what they're doing. If it takes them one day to give... Uh, a construction permit, then we're going to aim at reaching that, that one day. So it's, it's a healthy competition, so to speak, among countries. And I think that's, that's really the purpose, to encourage all the countries to compete and by doing so, enabling all the countries to actually improve. The, the report that's just been released, the 2014 Doing Business, is the 11th one. The whole exercise was started in 2003. Um, and really, what underpins the whole Doing Business effort um, an assessment effort is this fundamental belief that you need decent rules in order to generate and sustain economic activity over the longer term. And you need particular types of rules. You need rules that are fair and transparent. You need rules that protect property rights. You need uh, rules that make it cheap to resolve disputes. You need rules that will uh, protect uh, investors and contractors against abuse. Um, so you need a whole set of rules which will uh, allow business to take place in a, in a predictable way so that economic transactions uh, are, are predictable. 
During a media conference hosted by the Rwanda Development Board, the CEO, Ambassador Rwabiza, said that Rwanda has been very active since 2008. She added that despite the outstanding performance, the country is still determined to work alongside investors to help it unleash its full potential. In the future, we need really to focus on how we can reduce the cost of doing business. Uh, of course, we're doing a lot uh, at political level. We're doing a lot uh, uh, in terms of even fast-tracking, really, our integration, uh, including taking it by blocks, by building blocks if uh, uh, all EAC members are not yet ready to move on some reforms, to remove some of the, the non-tariff barriers, what our political leaders have decided, what the three presidents have decided is that, well, we can't afford to wait anymore. So we will just move with those who are ready to move, and when others are ready, they will just uh, join. They will just, uh, you know, catch up in the way. So this, I think, and these and in any uh, any other areas we need to focus on. How we will reduce the cost? The cost are still prohibitive. Improving the business environment is a very important factor in attracting investments or businesses in a country, but it's not the only factor. The other factors that businesses will look at, uh, they'll look at the you know the, the areas we look at in the doing business report, the regulations and how they're enforced. But they also look at uh, peace and security in the country, which is something that we are very proud of as Rwanda because we've achieved that uh, uh, very well. But they'll also look at uh, the market size. They will look at um, purchasing power because some of them, uh, their businesses directly link with the uh, consuming capacity of a country. So there are many factors they look at, but the doing business reforms and the business climate is a, an extremely important factor among the factors that businesses look at. Though SMEs are critical for economic development, their growth in Rwanda is said to be impeded by stringent border trade policies. Cross-border trading is one of the practices posing as a major challenge for small enterprises. But despite a challenge like this, Rwanda's business climate has greatly improved since the World Bank introduced doing business reforms. About five years ago, um, the business environment of Rwanda was not uh, as, as, as good as it is today. And what we have to is um, an improvement, a tremendous improvement of the business environment uh, compared to five years ago. Uh, if you look at the World Bank Doing Business Report, which is a tool that measures business environment across 189 countries in the world, Rwanda was ranked 158th uh, just five years ago. And uh, when the government at the time, um, led by the cabinet of Rwanda, decided that they were going to improve Rwanda's ranking, the Doing Business Report, and they were going to become very ambitious and very aggressive in, in how uh, business reforms were going to be implemented. We now have seen Rwanda drop and, and come to the position of 32nd in the world. So from 158th uh, five years ago to 32nd in the world today is, is a very big improvement. And in fact, the World Bank Doing Business Report uh, particularly shows that Rwanda has become the, the, the biggest reformer since the beginning of the report. No country has reformed as much as Rwanda has since this report was launched in the year 2002. So that just confirms uh, that the, the agenda that the government and the cabinet uh, decided to follow in implementing business environment has actually uh, borne fruits as, as is very clearly indicated today. The doing business effort is really a way of trying to measure the quality of that regulatory environment, the quality of the rules that surround doing business for domestic enterprises uh, that are situated in the major economic area in any country. Now, 11 years on, there are 189 countries who are ranked in this, uh, in this assessment. And there are two different ways that countries can look at this to assess their performance. One way is to look at your ranking relative to other countries. Another way to look at it is, it, is it's a slightly different measure, but the uh, the way they construct the measure is so you can look at yourself in relation to the best possible score that you could get in, in, a, in a particular area. And that way you can benchmark your progress over time. Um, as it happens, Rwanda is the country that has made the most progress towards that optimal frontier over the lifetime of, uh, of the doing business exercise. The World Bank report also highlights Rwanda's success at encouraging growth in the private sector and cutting red tape.
In 2013, the bank also ranked Rwanda as one of the best performers at closing the gap in what it referred to as the frontier. This is the highest performance on each reform in the report. The better an economy is doing, the better it closes in on the frontier. Time for a short break. When we come back, we talk to the World Bank about doing business in Rwanda and how Rwanda has kept its momentum in a reform-driven economy. Welcome back to Doing Business. Growing SMEs is an international conference for small enterprises in emerging markets. The conference was hosted in Kigali in November with an aim of knowledge exchange and further pave way for advanced development. This conference is mainly called the Growing SME Conference. It's aimed at seeing on, on how SMEs can grow in Africa. This is not only about Rwanda, it's about Africa, it's about all people that are involved in developing small and medium enterprises. So this conference brings together over 400 entrepreneurs, investors, and financiers to assist and make sure that our SMEs get the right solution for their challenges. And what takes place here is that we bring all this kind of ecosystem in the growth of SME, be it in the business development services, be it in the financing, be it in facilitating the networks, be it in the markets, all the information that is required to grow the industry. And all these people come together to, uh, to join their hands in a way of finding the tangible solutions that are necessary for the growth of the SME in this country, in Africa, and also all over the world. If it's easy to start a business in Rwanda, anyone who wants to start a business, whether they knew that it was easy or they did not know that it was easy, when they go to start a business, they'll find that it's easy because the reform has been made easy anyway. So um, the, the, the reforms are there for everyone to take advantage of, but it's important that we keep disseminating the information so that businesses are aware even before they come to experience the services. Well, what it means is that there's a government that's very serious about creating an environment in which businesses can operate uh, fairly, transparently, that they can be sure of easy treatment, that they will not be subject to unnecessary costs when they try and do the basic steps that you need to do when you set up a business or when you run a business or even if you're forced to close down a business. Um, so what it means to businesses is it means cost savings, it means that over time more people will invest, it means that over time these investors will create jobs and uh, ultimately it means that you know that prosperity will be created in that sense so uh, under it underpins the sort of whole process of of economic growth that the country is trying to achieve smes contribute almost 98 percent through domestic revenue and direct employment to rwanda's private sector government is urging entrepreneurs to embrace the new reforms while reinvesting in their businesses in order to attain economic sustainability. The question is, do the SMEs know about the reforms and are they taking advantage of them? Doing uh, business reforms uh, do, does the reforms, but it's up the, to the entrepreneur to own the reforms and capitalize on them to increase and grow. Uh, now the issue is the connection there is a missing gap, and I will tell you what that missing link is. This missing link uh, is that some SMEs are just not aware of some of these reforms, and you would be very surprised because they're busy doing their business. And now that's where consultants like us come in to bridge that gap so that we know what the reforms are and what their very proposition is. And we talk to the SMEs and we say, hey, did you know that there's this financing facility for that kind of business? If you're in agribusiness, for example, if you're in fast foods, if you're in this, did you know this? So this is how you can benefit. For example, there's something called BDF, Business Develop uh, Developers Finance. And this BDF is a funding facility for local entrepreneurs. Very few know about it. And very few are benefiting from it. Now, that's what we come in and, and bridge the gap and say, you could benefit from, you know, 50% on, 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 they give you guarantee on this and you can expand your business. Hey, would you like to franchise and have more people owning your brand that has proven successful in terms of profitability and all this? And so this is the, the gap that I think 
consultants should step in. You know, this is a platform for networking and understanding what is not being done well. So by identifying certain issues in that kind of platform, we get to know that there is a certain uh, institution, a certain uh, player in the industry that is not doing right. If you're not doing right, then we identify such kind of policy issues that are necessary for the growth of the business. We identify the players that are involved in the growth of the business. And then if you address such kind of challenges in the industry, then you are easing the way of doing business in the country. For example, one of the reforms that we did uh, this year was e-filing and e-payment. That's a completely new phenomenon in the business community in Rwanda because um, um, we, we, we did not have e-filing or e-payment of taxes before, it was all done manually. Again, even if the numbers are still uh, low and the, the minority of taxpayers are the ones using um, e-filing and e-payment, at least we're able to see how it's growing and our target is to reach a point where more than 50% of uh, businesses are using online services such as e-filing and, and e-payment or for trading across borders, electronic single window, or even company registration in RDB. In fact, what we've done in RDB to increase the numbers for online registration of companies is we've put a place, a corner, a self-help corner with computers and internet. And when people come to register businesses, they have an option to go and do it themselves online within RDB or to go and, and, um, and do it manually. And obviously that has actually facilitated many to do it online because we give them the facilities in RDB but also in our offices all over the country. Of course, you know, getting information out there about how these processes have changed. I mean, over the last few years there have been more than 34 reforms that have been enacted by the government and that poses an information challenge. There's no point in doing the reform unless people know how the procedures have been re revised. Um, and, you know, that's, that's one of the issues that come with, comes with a high pace of, of change. According to the Private Sector Federation, there are just over 80,000 SMEs operating in Rwanda. However, less than a third are registered. One of Rwanda's reforms when starting a business is reducing the time required to obtain a registration certificate from several days to just within 24 hours. Five years ago, we used to register an average of about 600 businesses a year and it would take almost uh, three weeks to just a business. And a business would have to go through different institutions to get that done. But with the reforms that, um, uh, that were undertaken, we now just about 6,000 businesses a year in the Office of the Registrar General. If you look at what we register in one year today, um, it's actually <laughs> much more than what was registered over a period of five years, you know, in, in, in 2008 when we started the reforms. So it's been a tremendous improvement from 800 businesses a year to, uh, from 600 businesses a year to about uh, 6,000 businesses today, I think is a very big improvement. When it comes to investments, we've also seen investments grow. Uh, as of this year, 2013, we actually reached over 1 billion investments that were registered in the first half of the year. And uh, again, if you look at about three years ago, we started to hit the 1 billion mark. Before that, the investments that registered were 200 and 300 million dollars, or within that range. But today, we are actually able to attract more than one billion dollars of investments a year, and now um, we are seeing that uh, actually also in the exports. Today, again, we have an average of 28 percent growth uh, of exports a year, and we think all these um, indications that uh, businesses are actually taking advantage of uh, the reforms that we've put in place, that their numbers are increasing. The investments are increasing, exports are increasing, but also if you look at the number of construction permits, for example, that Kigali City is issuing, this is also increasing. Or if you look at the transfer of property that is happening, because it's easier uh, and faster, you actually get more people registering property, you get more people applying for, for construction permits, you also get more credits um, in banks. In fact, uh, we had about a 34% increase in credit increased in the bank financial institutions in Rwanda. So you actually see uh, that the reforms are being uh, taken advantage of. And obviously, as a government, uh, our leaders expect that um, these numbers grow even faster. The ambitions are that Rwanda becomes a middle-income status country in the year 2020. And uh, the ambitions are that, uh, you know, for example, investments become 20% of GDP from 10%. So we expect investments to double. 
doing business, although it's a very useful measure of, uh, of the regulatory environment, it only presents a partial picture of the broader environment for competitiveness in any given economy. So regulations and the quality of regulations are really important for businesses, but so are other issues. So, so are issues like, uh, do you have the right skills in your economy? Are investors able to attract and retain staff that have the skills that they need? Uh, does, is electricity reliable and affordable? Can you get your goods out of the country easily because the road network is functioning well? Um, are you able to choose between a range of different credit options? So there are a number of areas like that that are not actually measured by the doing business reforms, but are also critical to um, the decision-making process of investors. What you've seen in Rwanda is you have seen, you've seen a, a rapid increase in the registration of domestic businesses. You've seen a less rapid increase in um, the rise of uh, foreign investment here in the country. There is no doubt that the 2014 Doing Business results are a statement of consistent effort to empower local and foreign entrepreneurs. The true success of these reforms will lie in their implementation and the willingness of small businesses to apply them in their operations. Rwanda has not exhausted its potential reforms and it, actually a country can never exhaust its, its, its uh, potential for reform. One of the countries we like to look at uh, as we look at areas to reform is uh, Singapore. Singapore is number one in the world in how easy it is to start a business or to do a business in, in, in their country. However, every year Singapore has a reform. Okay. You know, you'd think that by being number one, Singapore is comfortable because they've uh, done a lot of reforms. But actually, Singapore reforms every year, and that's that should motivate uh, other countries. Because if a country that is so doing so well keeps reforming every year, that just means that you can never come to to an end of reforms. That's it for this edition of Doing Business in Rwanda. Join us same time next month. If you want to share your views with us, you can simply follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at DBIR360 or simply jog on on www.cnbcafrica.com. Until next year, I'm Kezio Msoke David, wishing you a peaceful festive season. <music>